Hey guys and welcome to my first ever tutorial. Um, just over a year ago, I'd say I just got back into painting miniatures after like 17 years break, I used to paint back in the old Lord of the Rings days. And since then I started posting my work over on Instagram um, and I've had a ton of people reach out for tutorials, you know, how do you paint your, in the style that you do and all that sort of good stuff. So I thought in this video um, I'll do like a full painting process um, just briefly going over some of the techniques that I've used and then obviously in future videos I might break that down and show you different applications for those uses. Um, but why not go for the uh, poster boys themselves, uh, which are the Ultramarines, probably the most commonly used chapter slash legion or whatever. Uh, but it's painted out there and uh, go over some of the techniques on how I achieve this uh, and this grimdark style look with these miniatures. But ultimately, what I try and achieve uh, when I'm painting miniatures is sort of a story slash narrative. You know, if these guys were actually out there in the war zone, what would these look like? And I know there's a whole law thing around Ultramarines, how they all keep the armor clean and, you know, they're supposed to be spotless when they're going to battle. But, you know, once they're in that battle and they've been out there for days fighting and stuff, you know, what, what, what would that look like? Um, and that's sort of what I try and achieve with each model that I paint. So one thing I always try and do uh, with my miniatures before I even, you know, start to undercoat them or do anything to them is once I've put that miniature together and it's dried is I'll apply a little bit of texture so you get some nice surface variation going across that miniature uh, in areas where there might be like battle worn or especially down towards the bottom at feet. Uh, you might add like, you know, some of your texture paints uh, such as like sterling mud. Uh, and one of my favorite te is techniques, uh, which makes it look like the paint's peeling and depending on how you paint, it can make it look burnt and stuff like that, uh, which is crackle paint. You can use any because you're going to undercoat it. It don't really matter uh, which one that you use. And I know some of the uh, texture paints out there have a mixture of crackle paint uh, with a little bit of like the gritty sand stuff in there as well. So before I undercoat, I always put that on my miniatures and let them dry and it's just going to add to that grimdark aesthetic. So moving forward on the base coating phase, um, for this obviously I gave it a zenithal highlight because I'm going to be using a contrast paint um, for the ultra to get that ultramarine blue look, um, which obviously I've gone over and had like a, a white zenithal over my black primer. Um, as you can see now, I'm just literally going over all that with Tesla or Tes Tesla blue, I think it's pronounced. Um, but yeah, that's just a contrast paint by GW and I just coat the entire miniature in that. Uh, it is a really nice bluey saturated colour, uh, which is perfect for the Ultramarines. You don't necessarily have to do this with an airbrush. I just do it because I'm lazy and it's quicker. Um, but you can actually, you know, apply this by hand. And if you want to put a Zenithal highlight on it, you know, I recommend looking into some Zenithal dry brushing techniques um, if you've not got an airbrush. But obviously an airbrush is going to really elevate and it gets that nice smooth look. Now for the next highlight, which is, it's not necessary, but I just do this just to dull that really saturated blue down slightly uh, and reinforce those highlights, what we originally put on, on the Zenithal, which is Ionic Blue, I think it's pronounced by um, the Army Painter. It is um, an air paint. I believe you can get this in just your normal paint as well. Uh, but I'm just going to just go on top of there and just highlight some of those, you know, areas that it would really want it'd benefit from a little bit of a pop and it's just going to add that touch more contrast to uh, to your miniature and again it just it dulls it down a little bit you know that, that really high saturated look which is not necessarily what we want with the grimdark style uh, but either way you know you can go as crazy or as mad as you want with this stage it's just up to you to uh, experiment with that so as you can see at this next stage all i've done is just gone back in there over the metals and the pieces that need to be black uh, where you get the overspray from your airbrush and I've just gone in there and put those on. I've added some decals, glued the shoulder plate on and I've just given the full miniature um, a, a matte varnish. Uh, the reason I've done this is because I quite like the matte look. Um, it's going to seal everything in ready for when we get a bit later on we start using a couple of either oils or enamels. It's just going to protect those uh, base layers as well. It's not necessary but it's just something I like to do. So now, um, obviously, normally when it comes to Ultramarines, I do like the blue and black look. Um, but obviously, because I know a lot of you like the gold on your Ultramarines. Uh, what I have done with this, I've not actually used a gold colour. Uh, this is actually a bronze by Pro Acryl. 
uh, and it's a fantastic colour this, I absolutely love it, uh, you can just use it you know, straight out of the pot if you just wanted to paint some bronze or like a dull gold, um, but it also acts as a really good base coat for any sort of gold or anything that you, you know, you might be painting in, in that sort of colour because you can dull it back down with your washes and stuff and highlight back over it and it, you can just get like loads of different looks from using this. Uh, but obviously these little bits are the bits you want to be taking your time on. Uh, but ultimately at these first few stages, all I'm doing before we get to like the the washing phase where we're going to use some enamels is I'm just base coating everything out really. Working my way around the miniature and just getting all those base coats down. I'm not worried about highlighting or making everything look perfect before we put the wash on. Because uh, we're going to come back to that a little bit later and fetch those back up. So when it comes to the next phase, you know, when it comes to metals, I have done a completely separate video uh, on metals, but for me, when it comes to metals, I don't like fully base coating them out, like going straight over with like a, a really high metallic colour, unless that's what I'm wanting. Um, but I tend to just dry brush straight over a, a black a black primer, and for me, that just it just gives it that bit more of a grim dark slash metal look to it. Um, but like I say, I've got um, a video coming out soon um, with three different ways that you can, you know, paint metal. Um, and again, all these colours, you know, you know, I think I'm using Scale 75 Thrash Metal, I think it's called, or Trash Metal. But ultimately, you don't have to stick with those colours, you know. As long as you've got, like, some sort of metallic colour, what's, like, a bit shiny, you're going to be absolutely fine. And again, with the golds, it's completely up to you. You might not like the dull gold look, you might want a really nice, bright warm gold look um this bit obviously is up to you but i'm just showing you uh, how i do mine but i think dry brushing metal like with guns or anything that's going to be silver um just just in my eyes looks a little bit more metal metally if that's a word the helmet itself obviously i wanted a different color than the rest of the model just to give it that you know a little bit of character a little bit of different look like it's some sort of a captain or something and that's hence why I painted the white stripe going down his helmet. Uh, this is quite a, a tricky phase so you want to take your time on this if you are base coating it out. But for the for the red itself I just used, going over that zenithal again, just a uh, Blood Angels Red Contrast Paint by GW. But yeah definitely you know adding little stripes and little details here and there to your miniature can give it that little bit of character. And, and one thing I love doing before I actually, you know, create a miniature or put one together, I always think, what, what's, you know, what's happening to this guy? Well, you know, what's this guy's story? You know, is he, is he like a lone survivor and he's absolutely knackered and worn out going through a battlefield? Is he, you know, a little bit, you know, like a sniper, he's stood on top of a hill, he's been there for days watching over things. Um, but I think adding, you know, that little bit of character to your miniatures and trying to create a narrative and a story... Uh, can really elevate your, your painting and, you know, the miniature itself and stealth, self, <laughs> what you're trying to paint. If you want to go for stealth, don't paint a miniature. It's gone. It's disappeared. Now comes the real Grimdark. Let's get that real Grimdark look, the stage which I love and what's going to completely transform your miniature uh, to the Grimdark aesthetic. Uh, so here I've just got a little bit of Mineral Spirits and I'm using, I think this is Dark Brown Wash by MIG. Obviously you can use any sort of like Brown Wash or Dark Brown Wash, you know, AK have got some fantastic ones. But this is the one that I happen to have uh, lying about. It is uh, a really nice wash, these, you know, these MIG uh, washes are uh, enamels uh, are absolutely fantastic and if you've never used them you know don't be scared of them these are what i like about enamels is they're because i paint pretty quick and you know i don't really have much time so i like the fast drying time with other than you know like oils when you're waiting and stuff but all i've done is just i keep i've got a little bowl of mineral spirits and i just keep dipping that in and out obviously applying it a little bit heavier towards the bottom where the the muck and stuff would naturally accumulate uh, but what this does, you know, it's going to dry like a little bit of a, a chalky, dusty feel. Um, but it's also going to go into those crevices and do a little bit of panel lining for you. And you might be looking at this if you've never used this stuff and thinking, why is he just ruining that miniature? Why, why is he just made a right mess of it by slopping all this brown stuff all over it? Which is uh, the next stage uh, where we're actually going to remove that. Uh, but one little thing just to get a little bit of tonal variation uh, in that in that like grimy look. I think I had a little bit of Winter Streak and Grime by AK here and there and dab it uh, all over the miniature. 
But now for the removal phase, I, I, I don't tend to wait for mine to dry. You can just literally go straight in with it if you want, cause, because I'm aiming just to leave a little bit in crevices and letting some drip down. Uh, this is why I just, I just literally go straight back in and start removing it. But as you can see, I've got like a cotton dabber waller thing. I'm, they're called all different things these all over the world. Uh, but just like a cotton wool. This, these ones are quite good. Uh, here in UK, I think these are from a company called Superdrug. Don't worry, they don't just sell like some crazy drugs like heroin and uh, cocaine, all that sort of stuff. Uh, it's not like a super drug store. We can go in and get some hardcore drugs. It's just a, it's just like a convenience store where they sell makeup here at UK. But they, they sell like boxes of these for like a pound, I think it is. You get like 80 in a box and they've got like a sharp end, which is the end I'm using here. Uh, a little bit later on, I flip it around and they've got like a, which is this end, uh, like a fat end. Um, and this can just help you get into some of those more bigger areas and clean it up just that little bit more. One little thing you might notice with these is sometimes you do get these little cotton fuzzy little strands coming off it, uh, which can be a little bit annoying. So you might have to spend just a few seconds going around miniature and um, pulling those off. It depends on, you know, what sort of brand and stuff you use. Some are really nice and tightly packed, like the Johnson's ones, Johnson's baby ones. Uh, they don't tend to come off quite as much as these, but... I don't mind, you know, I'll go around and just quickly pull them off. Uh, but you don't have to use these either. You can just use a, a brush as well. Just dip it in your mineral spirits and, and get it off. But obviously, with that, you're not going to leave as much in your in your recesses. Uh, but it, a brush can really help you get into some of those hard-to-reach areas, you know, like under its backpack and all that sort of good stuff. So this is it once it's completely dry. As you can see, it's got that, like, dirty, dusty, grimy look to it, and it's added a bit of colour variation to the miniature. It does look quite chalky at the moment, but obviously what we're going to be doing is adding some little bits and uh, bobs and repainting certain areas, which is going to take that back down. But this is really going to, you know, elevate that grim, dark sort of look. And you can go as heavy as you want with this. And if you wanted to go back in at this point and remove a little bit more, uh, you could actually go and do that. Now, one thing, sometimes you can do this before, you, you know, you had like your, your grimy look or your, or your washers, but I like to do this after just because it makes them stand out a little bit more. But all I'm doing here is just a little bit of sponge chipping, which I've just got like a really dark brownie ready paint, you know. I think Rhinox Hide by GW, that's a fantastic one. But all I'm doing is just literally dipping that in, wiping most of the excess off uh, with some tweezers. Uh, and just going in there and just adding some chips and again this is a phase where you can add as much as you want or as little as you want um i don't always like the look of this but if i'm not going too crazy with it because obviously you don't have much control over it you have a certain amount of control but if you've not wiped your brush off properly uh, then you might dab a bit on the thing oops didn't mean to do that much um and if you're lucky you might be able to quickly wipe it off but after this phase, I just, you know, I might go back in with a brush and make some of those chips and dings a little bit bigger. Again, I pay special attention to places that might get dinged up a little bit more, like around the bottom of the feet where he's running through cobbles and kneeling down on his kneecaps and maybe areas like the, the elbows and parts of the backpack that, you know, might be getting contact to surfaces quite often. Uh, but yeah, going back in with a brush and adding some more scratches and stuff can really elevate this phase and just make those scratches look... Uh, a little bit different now one thing i do advise doing on some of your chips is getting like a lighter color than your your base coat paint uh, for this i've used like a really light blue and just just underneath just tapping really finely some of those areas underneath which is going to highlight it and make your chips look a little bit more 3d um, and you can go in in even places where there aren't chips and just add little scratches and stuff but Trust me, guys, once you've done this little bit of work around your miniature, it's going to make those chips and everything just come to life and make them look uh, a whole lot better. Now, one final stage of grim darky, one final stage of weathering uh, that I love to do, because weathering is, as you might have guessed, my favourite stage. Um, for this, I'm using Dirty Downs Rust. If you've not heard of this product, I know what it is. Just go out and get some. It is the best thing on this planet. Honestly, it'll just replace all your other oil washers, all your other... Everything like that you might have bought to get so much different variation in rust. This just knocks them all out out at the park out out the water uh, which moves me on to my next bit no pun intended uh, is a water soluble uh, one as well so you don't need to buy any like special acrylic thinners or anything like that 
uh, to use it. It's just, just, just dip it into your water and off you go. It does dry extremely quick, uh, which which is probably might be a good or a downside to it. Uh, but yeah, take it down for us. It is, it is amazing. And there we have it. Obviously, in this, I've not really gone in and showed you some of the other details and stuff that I've added, such as, you know, like the eyes and the, you know, like the little screen on his hand and stuff, which I might get into those in a later video. Um, but here it is. The, the whole thing literally took me about, oh, I dare say, without messing about with the camera and stuff, I dare say about an hour to two hours. Um, so you can probably see how quick you can get an army of these painted up if you wanted to do a little little bit of batch painting. Um, <clears throat> but little things what I might do after is just get your original silver colours, re-dry brush over some of those metals and get like a light gold or a silver and re-dry brush over some of those gold colours uh, which are just going to fetch everything back to life. Um, but yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you've got any more questions, please let me know below and uh, i'll hope to see you in my next tutorial see you soon guys thanks for watching and please remember to hit that subscribe button if you want to follow me on instagram please head over to uh, the the feral painter see you next time